dual review is brought to you by spiderwolf.com. On today's dual review, it's Destin Legends. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Hey everybody, today is the 18th, and we're taking a look at the card game, Destined Legends. That's right, and this was a Kickstarter game uh, from 2012 that you supported. Uh, it finally came out, uh, and you just got the box. It was uh, designed by Ali Shokati, and the company right there is uh, Decobot. Yes. Yeah, this is the nice box that it came in, and it's it's very cool. It kind of flies in the face of, you know, bigger is better kind of thing, where they, you know... The box is appropriate to what they charge, you yeah. know, kind of thing. So I, I like the way it's designed inside. You have your, you know, uh, three decks easily divided, and the rule book fits nicely. It's it's this long, you know, thing which works really well. Um, so I really enjoy it. Um, having said that, I don't know if it's going to continue that way because the big box stores don't like that. Yep. Um, there's some pretty badass artwork on the back. Uh, this game has to do with dragons, and these are two dragons. It's pretty awesome. Anyway, so here's the rule book, and it is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's done fairly well. It's got a lot of pictures, and you know, it, it's not short on anatomy of the card or anything like that, which we have complaints of that for a lot of rule books. Uh, having said that, you do have to read kind of the entire rule book, which is not a big deal because it's not that long in order to start playing. Um, and there are a few things lacking. There, there's like one or two questions that we came up with that aren't answered in here. As, yep. as far as we can tell, we've read it, you know, twice from cover to cover to try to find it. Um, but having said that, again, it's pretty extensive. And I do like that they included a card list, especially because once you start adding more cards, uh, it becomes a little bit of a question of which one were part of the sideboard, whatever. Um, and this does a good job of breaking down the core game. There also are a few mistakes on this <laughs> as well, though. Uh, a few of the names are different. They're just different. I think I assume they got updated on the cards and then not in the rulebook. And then a few of them have, there are four of this type and two of this type of card, but it's actually the opposite. There's two of that type and four of that type. So they get the numbers wrong maybe once or twice. That's a little irritating. But overall, pretty awesome rulebook. I have no complaints. And the artwork is just awesome. That's part of why I wanted to uh, support this game is because of the artwork. And because they touted it as the RPG system or type of system. Okay, so we'll get into how it's played. Um, each of the core decks has three legend cards. So these are your character cards. Uh, I am playing the darkness and he's playing the fire. So I have got Vega, I've got Cedric, and I've got Rosalind. So we're putting them this way because technically we should be sitting apart, you know, opposed to each other. It is a two-player game, although they have hinted that it will be more in the future. But for now, it's a two-player game. And there are three rows, so it's very important where we put this. They do provide a board, um, but that was extra, and I didn't know if I needed it or not. But I probably will get it if I continue to you know, buy updates to this game. Um, so this row is my legend row, that's his legend row, and then there's a common row for monsters, dragons, and even for legends to move if they need to get in range of the other legends you know, kind of thing to fight it out. Um, it really matters where you have it set, though, because they're going to be assigned a number. And when dragons come out, they're going to roll a 12-sided die as roulette to see what space they affect. So you're saying, hey, well, there's only nine if you have three rows of three. But what happens is if you roll, let's say I roll the 12, that's going to affect his entire row. So what it does is wherever you start, you have to you know, agree yep. that this is where it starts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So if your dragon does a 3, then he's going to affect your own character, or my dragon, if my dragon, he'll do something helpful to mine. If he rolls a 9, he's going to affect his legend negatively. And if he rolls a 12, he's going to affect all three of his legends negatively, or a 10, I'm going to you know, affect all mine positively, yada yada. So that's, that's how the roulette system works. Uh, our level cards are provided here, and you want to take that? Yeah, sure. Um, basically, there's two things that they talk about. They talk about levels and tiers. Uh, levels are among the tiers. So you have level ones, two, and ones, level one, two, and three in tier one, four, five, and six in tier two, and then seven, eight, and nine, obviously in tier three. Yeah. So, so again, uh, that will be 
useful when putting out equipment or monsters, and I guess we'll, we'll get to that right now. Now, one of the things that they say is that you should start off, you have seven cards that you draw, and you should start off with a monster of, of tier one and a weapon within tier one, or level one, tier one, whatever. It's kind of hard to, you know, keep those separate. Right. Anyway, um, and so they say randomly draw, and then if you don't get those, then you should just mulligan. I'm going to say right now that we do that far too often. We end up going through half the deck sometimes because there's not a lot of, like, level one weapons, and nor do you want them because, you know, as you grow in power, you want more powerful weapons. So just simply go through and be like, okay, there's one uh, monster that's level one, and then I'm going to try to find, you know, a weapon that is level one or two or something. And there's one that's level three, so that's good enough. So I'm going to start with those two, and then I'm going to randomly draw, you know, the other four four cards. One, two, three. I put mine seven on the bottom. Yeah. So here you go, and away you go. So the idea here is to level up. The way you win the game is to get to level ten, which, again, see us later. We're going to have a point of contention there. Uh, but for now, we're going to assume that that's what we're going to be doing. Now, I'm going to look for a weak monster. Let's say it's my turn. A roll, then I, you know, get to go first. I'm going to put out my troll beetle, which is pretty cool. And he is a tier one monster. And because I am only level one at this point, he is only going to be worth two health. So we're going to grab a marker to show that he has two health. This is important to actually put the health on. Rather than show damage, we're showing health. Right. Because whoever summoned it, that determines how much health it has. On what level you started you summoned it at. So in other words, because I'm level 1, he only has 2 health. But if I was level 3 and I summoned him, he'd actually have 7 health. Which will make it harder for me to fight, but might also make it much harder for him to fight if he's a lower level. So it really does depend when the monster comes out, that's how much health they have in regards to the level you have. So he only has 2 health, um, but most monsters have, well I think all of them, have counter abilities. So... Right now, because I don't have a weapon that is level 1, my level is 3, I'm going to have to fight him with melee. Now, the way that melee works is it has a range of 1, and right now, all my legends have a range of 1. So what it means is, from, from this row to this row is 1 range. Right. So it doesn't go blah, blah, blah. And I should mention that uh, heroes cannot move diagonally. So it's, it's literally, if you're attacking from this row to this row, it's one. This row to that row, it's two, you know, kind of thing. And that, that's as simple as it is. Yep. So I don't have any weapons, so I'm just going to melee, which is a guaranteed hit uh, uh, worth whatever tier I am. And right now I'm just the tier one, because I'm only level one. One through three is tier one. So I'm going to hit him for one point. I'm going to go ahead and go with Vega first. Uh, so he's going to take one point. But because he's still alive, he gets a chance to counterattack. I'm going to roll one dice. He got a five, so he does hit me. And unfortunately, he hits me for two, so that sucks. So there you go. I am hit for two. And now it's the next turn for my next legend. I'm going to go ahead and go with Cedric. Actually, I'm going to move Cedric first, because he can actually attack twice if I move him. That's his little ability. So each each legend has an ability down here. And uh, I misspoke. It's not uh, two attacks. It's just I get a damage plus whatever my tier is, that damage as well. So this is actually going to be two damage here, so I guess that's a little overkill. At the point I should have started with him and hopefully got him. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to I'm gonna take his last hit point, and because he's now dead, he doesn't get a chance to counterattack. So he goes into my discard pile. I gain a level, and I gain a loot. So there we go. And um, again, there are three different types of cards, pretty much. There is the, kind of the spell and item card. There is the monster cards that you put out and fight to level. And then there are weapon cards. Yep. So, there it is. Now it is your turn. Yep, and since he is here, I, and there's only three, obviously I can't put a character, uh, monster there. Um, but he is in range to attack, so I'm going to put out my troll beetle. Which, by the way, I think the troll beetle is the coolest looking thing in the world. I think that's awesome. Yeah, uh, it's and all he, really great artwork. Yes, yes. And uh, he only has an attack of two because I am level one. So let's just put out a two there. I'm going to attack with uh, Savage, I guess. Yes, I guess I'll do that. So he's going to take one damage automatically, but then he gets to roll. And he rolls a two, so he does not counterattack. You're unscathed. And I'm going to attack with uh, Jordan here. So that kills it. Goes in my discard pile. I gain a level and a card. And now, he, you know, he still can use his character. If he has an item that he wants to play or, uh, you know... If he has a dragon, he can summon that, you know, kind of thing. Right. And the dragon acts as another legend, so he has his own turn. I believe dragons can only be summoned at, like, level 5 or so. I don't remember. It's, it's always in the corner. It'll tell you what it is. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and attack Alt with uh, Aldrich. I'm going to 
attack your what is it the Cedric? So I attacked Cedric with Haldric, and unfortunately, you don't have a uh, a weapon card, a so weapon I'm not going to so counter counterattack. Him. Yeah. So anyway, so it goes on like that, and again, the first one to ten wins. It's not a very long game, probably about a half an hour or so. Right. Um. So, uh, let, have you got your dragon? Because that's that's kind of a fun. Okay, let's pull out the dragons. Pull out the dragons. Whip them out. So the dragons go in, uh, you know, any spot that's available. And the fun with dragons is they have hit points. They have no counter abilities, which, you know, is kind of stinky. But they either, you know, help your, as I was saying earlier, they either help your characters, you know, the ones they're allied with, or hurt the other characters, but it's all kind of chance. So, yes, you control it as far as positioning it and choosing when to use it, but you really don't choose what the outcome is going to be or what it's going to affect. So it's all just a roulette system, so I'm going to put my dragon out, and uh, that one's worth 25 points. He's worth 25 points as well. Um, their effects are different. Um, my negative effect is I will target uh, a character, and that takes 7 damage, and it gets cursed if they're in the same row as the dragon. So that's pretty cool. And then my positive is I remove all status effects from whatever I land on or, you know, whatever the roulette shows up. Right. Uh, my negative effect is the target takes five damage and has burn. If opponent targets are in adjacent tiles to the ruby dragon, they each take three more damage. And my positive is my characters get wall. So this stuff is all cool. Like the the, the, the legends, when you when you get like the, the good weapon cards... Uh, some of them almost feel overpowered. You know, they're very significant. I have several. And, um, yeah, that's that part's a lot of fun. It does feel a little RPG-ish where you're putting out, you know, the best equipment that you can at this time. When you switch something out, that gets trashed. So, you know, unfortunately, you really need to plan ahead. And, and you know, if you, whoops, I should have should not have gotten rid of that. Well, SOL. Um, the deck, if you run out of the deck, you lose. But there's no way you're going to do that. No. Uh, you're going to easily get to level 10 first. And that brings us to, I think, our major point of contention. Do you want to take it from here? Uh, yeah, the biggest problem that we have is essentially whoever starts, and provided they get a decent enough hand, they're just going to get to level 10 before you. It's just how it is. Um, and then there's no real reason to attack the other player. That's my biggest point, is that I, I think that the, the thing that start, yeah, you do have a chance, but if you fail once, then I immediately have the chance. Right. So that's not terrible, but yes, there's no real reason. Like, I moved out here just to show you that I could, but... I, there's no real reason to do that because I'll just stay here in safety. There's no reason to take on these really high, you know, health characters who could counterattack me and, you know, screw me up. So let's just level each other up until, you know, whatever yeah, one of us gets the first. So that's the major point that I have. And we haven't figured out whether it becomes more balanced if you say, okay, well, the first to level to 10 can then attack the other guy. Or maybe it's the first to level 10 and the first to kill the dragon. Or the first to level 10 and kill one, at least one of the legends. I don't know. There, there feels like there needs to be something else. Otherwise, there's no real reason. I mean, it is, it is fun if you decide to attack. Well, let's just leave that there. If you decide to eat up the space, then neither of us can level. Right, because we can't put out monsters. And so now we're just going to have it out to the, to the death. But, again, if I'm level 8, it's like, well, I might as well have just stayed there. I could put out two monster possibly, and kill them all, you know, both in one, one yeah, turn. especially and if then... they're low level. So, so that's, that's my major problem. Again, the artwork is really great. I do enjoy having the RPG aspects of it, and I think that it's a solid game, and maybe they'll, they'll come up with, you know, a, a little adaptation of the rule or more incentive. Um, we didn't really talk about the sideboards. Uh, the sideboards come in these cool boxes that look a little like bubblegum, but they're pretty cool. They've got the uh, silver embossed, you know, logo on them, and in the back they have a picture of the new hero that's in here. This one is the earth or nature. This one is the water, and I, I got the, you know, the Kickstarter where they supplied these two, and there's going to be a lot more in the future, and you mix them into your deck. Uh, one thing that we didn't really talk about is um, there are different weapons for different factions. So, like, this one is a darkness weapon, so he couldn't use it. Right. He wouldn't be able to use it. Um, likewise, he has ones of fire, and he can't use it. Um, the sideboards are meant to be mixed in with these these uh, core sets at the moment, so they have kind of a, a darkness slash leaf. So if I'm working with the leaf, I can use this card. If I'm working with uh, fire and water, then I can use this card. And then they have the opposite. They have darkness and water and fire and leaf, you know, kind of thing. So you can tailor your deck, um, but obviously you can't use them unless you're that you know, uh, can wield that. Right. So only characters of that can wield it. As indicated up there. But there's also universal cards, uh, which have the, 
well, the yin yang symbol for for monsters. It's the same for weapons. Is it? Yeah, right here. Yeah. So so that that gives you, you know, core core uh, cards that every faction can have. So there is a little bit of deck building and figuring out what deck you like to use. Uh, and whatnot. So I, I appreciate that, and the mixture of characters is fun. I mean, if you're able to kill off, like if I'm using a sideboard and you're able to kill off my water character, then I can't use those cards anymore. So if they come up, they're kind of wasted. So there is some strategy there, and just like magic, you're you're kind of trading off uh, more flexibility with possibly not being able to use part of your deck, you know, kind of thing. If if they do, if they play, if the enemy plays right. Right. Um, I enjoy kind of the contrast of random with strategy but having said that there's not a whole lot of strategy it's just level 10 so we need to figure out what we can add yes it's not terribly compelling if it's just the simple level mechanic so i appreciate that they tried to make it streamlined and i just we have to i i want to attack you yes and i want to attack you too <laughs> oh uh, so I don't really know what else can be said. I, I am excited to see where this goes, and I probably will keep collecting it. Uh, I enjoy the differences between characters. I have a character that can use you know two item cards instead of just one, because you're usually only limited to one. Uh, I have one that can move, and then everything that I hit also gets the power of my tier. So if I'm tier three, I'm doing three extra damage kind of thing if I'm in the same row with it. Yep. Uh, and then I have one that you know allows me to heal another character. Uh, you have health potions and grenades, you know, that are not grenades. They're like, what, napalm and, and ion, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's fun. All the cards are beautiful. All yes. the monsters are awesome. They're also damn cool. Uh, but I'm just kind of rambling at this point because I, I want to I wanna like it more than I do. It's just that core mechanic that's like, really, I don't think that's they enough. They just figured that out a little bit more. Play tested it just one more time. Well, no, I don't think it's play testing. I think it's just the, the idea of them. It was just like, let's just, you know, fuck people up or whatever. But they didn't realize that the easiest way to win this game is just to level up. So yeah. what's the point? I mean, if you're trying to win, if you're just trying to have fun, which, you know, sometimes we do, yep. then you'll want to, you know, block up this row and just fight each other after you get, hopefully I get one more level than he does or something like, like I get, if I'm the first to tier three, then I can gunk up this and have at it. But it's going to be a lot longer game and um the way that counter works and especially with her she gets two weapons and that's but i sucks. can't i can't use both weapons i'm only allowed to attack once but yeah but she does get two weapons yeah she, i mean whatever um one thing we didn't mention is that when you attack with a weapon first thing you do and it's like i'm going to attack with this character rosalind is charge so unfortunately i only got a two in this but you charge your weapon and then you can decide which of these abilities to use so in her case you know, she has extra abilities to use, and right. it's kind of cheap. But, you know, if I'm attacking her, then she might counter for twice as much damage as I did to her kind of thing. So that kind of sucks. It may be a little unbalanced. I don't know. Maybe it's just that's the benefit of having that character. And maybe there's just more benefits of my characters that I didn't quite, you know, figure out. I mean, this one is kind of powerful, but eh, unless I'm willing to move and make myself vulnerable or whatever. So, again, I guess I kind of want to like it more than I do. It's It's cool. The artwork's awesome. Just just a little bit more we, we want, I think. I mean, there's also, you know, like the status effects. We didn't go over, like, there's there's wall that help protect. And then there's, you know, bleeding, which will cost you... These uh, actually get attached to a character. And then there's bleeding that'll, you know, every, every turn you lose your tier worth of health kind of thing. And then there's berserk that makes you extra strong, but it also wounds you. It, like, makes that character strong. Unless you're this guy. You don't get wounded with this guy. And then there's fire that obviously only he can use and, you know, so on and so forth. There's, you know, ones for the sideboards, the nature, and the water as well. So there are these status effects. And these last three turns. Then there are temporary status effects, like, uh, you know, blindness and whatever that are denoted by these little tokens. Right. And they only last one turn. Mute. Um, and you, you know, so, Stagger. yeah, so, so there is definitely some planning involved, uh, with the luck. So that part, I don't have a problem with. It's just literally that first one to level thing. I mean, if it was that, at least it would be more levels. I mean, it doesn't take long to get to yeah, level Yeah, yeah, I kind of want more levels. I think that's a good way to fix it. But, um, there, there have been instances where it's like, oh dude, I, I totally have this, but then I miss that character by one point, like a creature. So I'm trying to level and win. But I missed that character, so now he has an easy opportunity. Right. So there is some, you know, heartbreak there. And, uh, you know, replayability because I want to try that faction or whatever. But every time we've played, we've always been like, well, let's, okay, so I got to level 10 first. 
um, let's keep going. You know, let's let's be the first to kill off all the heroes or something like that, or first to kill off the dragon or whatever. Yep. So so it's just not compelling enough to just level up and be done with it. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, I enjoy like any other game. You're know, looking at the cards and what they do and figuring out when best to use them. And um, the monsters are cool, nice range, and yeah. So. All right, enough of us rambling or me rambling. I, there's, I, I really do want to like it more. And, um, I do think that this is one of the better Kickstarters that that I've I've supported, and that Theron, our friend, has supported possibly too. And like you know, like Storm the Castle, all the ones that we've done recently. Um, so it's pretty solid. I just I think it begs for that one simple house rule change. Yep. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our great playlist. Game Lab's been a lot of fun. Yes, it has, and please leave comments. We love comments, and you can help support us by buying our wares at spiderwolf.com. That's right. T-shirts, a card game, art, print, shirts, stories, and more. And if you're on Facebook, so are we, so find us and friend us, and if I'm online, I will chat with you all day. We are also blogging. Uh, you can find me, fisk37.tumblr.com. I'm blogging as characters, releasing character sheets, updates of the world that I've created for 10 plus years. Uh, take a look at it. If you like it, share it, support me that way. And mine is nicholasbach.tumblr.com, where I have short stories and poetry. So if you're interested, check that out. Okay. See you later. Oh, what happened to that last one? Oh, my goodness. I hate our guns, man. On the next Duel Review, it's Code Geass. Oh, can we eat that from Legends? Uh, yes, we do. Do you want me to turn it off? No. You're gonna make it? I don't know. Do something funny while I'm gone. Like what? I'll drink water. What the hell do I do that's funny? I'm not a funny person. Um. I got nothing, dude. Looking for some like props or something. I got nothing. What do I do? So will I be rolling on the ground? No. You know? No, you will not. Are you like picking your nose or something? Yes, yes. I'll zoom in. <laughs> the world no. Slow motion it. <laughs> With heightened noises. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's so gross. Oh, what happened to that last one? It's going. Oh, mine didn't even come out. I hate our guns, man. I like our guns. Well, yours is better than mine. It actually shoots every once in a while. So, again, if you didn't get it, <laughs> we like this game and the artwork. But it needs that one extra yeah, rule. Just the dynamic. I'm sorry, I was rambling bit. so much. I just I, it, this is a hard game to talk about because it has a lot of rules that don't really make sense until you do them. Yeah, like it's hard to explain. Um, and I do wish that I had the playboard. That's one thing I say. If you want to get into this game, do the playboard. This game is definitely not as as hard as like Magic the Gathering or something. So it's much more accessible and easy that way. But the depth just isn't quite there. But the artwork's cool. Yep. The artwork is cool. Yeah. One thing you don't know about Nick is that uh, whenever we decide to do house rules, he defaults to not house rules. And it's so frustrating for me. Well, see, the problem... The it's problem like, is, well, the rule book doesn't say that. And it's like, well, we're doing house rules, man. The problem, and he was winning, too. It's like, fuck you, man. The problem with doing house rules is you, you don't really to talk about what rules you're going to stick with. So you don't know if you're going to take this part from the rule book or this part from that. So... You know, when he brought out that second dragon, I was like, uh, you're, you're not allowed to do that. I got a promo dragon from the Kickstarter thing, and yeah. he got an extra badass weapon, which is also a pro. You know, so I was thinking, okay, well, they're balanced, which they really are. In fact, he was kicking my ass, like I said. I was. But uh, whatever. Whatever, man. <laughs>